Galatians 4. And we will read verse 6. Galatians chapter 4, we will read verse 6. There's an important thing that you should be doing, and it's like a necessary thing if you're going to start the ministry. It's a necessary, essential ingredient when you grow in the Lord. If you want to produce fruit and do mighty things for the Lord, there is one thing that you should be doing, and this is called the filling of the Spirit. It is one of the most important things. It will dramatically change your life, and I know it did with mine. Pray it every day or pray it three times a day. I pray it as much as I uh, confess my sins. So this is an important ingredient that you should be doing. It's called the filling of the Spirit. Now, you might say, why is this filling of the Spirit so important? Because when you empty out more of flesh yourself and God takes more control, then God's power, God's working, can be more displayed by your action and speech. So a lot of times, the reason why we're not developing enough fruit is that because self is not completely out of the way, self has some kind of credit in it, see? Self has some hand in it. Now, a great example, and people online can definitely understand this as well, is that uh, people online, I want them to understand this too, it doesn't matter how I make the videos or come up with the ideas right. or title it, etc. Because whenever I would try to do that, now don't get me wrong, the Lord would bless it, but whenever I would try to do that, sometimes self intervenes. And when self intervenes, then God's full glory cannot be magnified and displayed. Right. And sometimes the Lord will do that to teach you a lesson. Uh, church building, sometimes it does make a difference. People will think that it's a nice church setting. You know, you set up the hours that way and you have enough people. That way people can come in. But sometimes we depend upon self, see on those matters, and then God doesn't take full control. Why is the filling of the Spirit so important, Pastor? Because your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was filled with the Spirit when He was tempted by the devil. Yeah. So that's how important the power is. Oh, why is the filling of the Spirit so important, Pastor? Because Charles Spurgeon, he would get on his members that if he preached a bad sermon, I know you members have not been praying for me that day to be filled with the Spirit. Why is the filling of the Spirit so important? Because... Uh, another person, Charles Finney, he credited so much about the Holy Spirit, which is why he can just walk inside a factory and convert the whole factory and then turn inside a church service instead of a working day. You try that in your job. You try that in your job. But that's how much filling power of the Spirit there is. Why is the filling power of the Holy Spirit so important? Because praying high, he was known as praying high. He would, he would be famously known to get prayers answered on the spot. In fact, the famous preacher Wilbur Chapman asked praying Hyde to pray for him. And because of that, his first meeting, it just got hundreds of people coming in. So the, that's why the filling power of the Spirit is so important. It does incredible things, life-changing things, etc. You might say, okay, I get it, Pastor. It's that important. So Samson was filled with the power of the Spirit that physically he was able to do supernatural things. In the Bible, Paul was filled with the Spirit. The Bible says the first church was filled with the Spirit. And they were able to get several thousand people. So you get it, right? That important? All right, what's the first thing you need to do? You need to get saved. That's the first thing. Look at Galatians chapter 4, and we will read verse 6. The Bible shows here that in order to be filled with the Spirit, you obviously need to be a saved person. And I don't care how often you speak in tongues or you get touched by some, some guy who just t laid hands on you. If you're not saved, you're not going to get that. That's right. Look at Galatians 4, verse 6. And because, see, for the reason, what? Ye are sons. See, you're a saved son. God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. See that? So you have to be saved first. That's pretty obvious. Because ye are sons. That's why you can be filled with the spirit. All right, the second thing, you should have a strong desire. Look at John chapter 7, John chapter 7. And once you go to John chapter 7, I want you to bookmark that. All right, I want you to bookmark that so we can go back here. I'm going to turn to John chapter 7, and we will read verse 37 through 39, verses 37 and 39.
i know if i drew a hill with a bunch of grapes and all that you know i'd fascinate you you know i'm really sorry you know i'm really i should have had him go after me i'm really sorry ok yeah stop looking at that board look this way ok i know some of you are glancing at that look this way ok we're going to look at john chapter seven and verse thirty seven and verse thirty nine you have to have a strong desire see the thing is is that if you do you want it? Do you want it that bad? Amen. Okay, if you want it that bad, then when trials happen, do you say, Lord, slack off a bit right there? Do you want the filling power of the Spirit that you're willing to sacrifice something? See? What if the Lord's way to fill you up with His Spirit, which is quite often, is through suffering? Sometimes the Lord will take away something very precious out of your life so that He can get full glory. Now, do you want the Spirit that bad? See, that's something. I'll tell you one thing. Samson, whether he was right in the mind or no, he wanted it so badly that he could say, let me die. So here's the thing, is that, do you want it that bad? Look at John chapter 7, verse 37 and 39. You have to have a strong desire. Notice the Bible says right here, in, in the last day, <clears throat> that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if, see, based, condition, if, what? Any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Now, notice this is speaking about the Holy Spirit. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So waters, a flood, like a flood will come out of you. But what is this flood? Verse 39, but this spake he of the what? Spirit. All right, but how do you get that? Notice in verse 37, it starts out in if, based on the condition. If what? Any man what? Thirst. Now, it said thirst. That, that shows that you're so desperate, you don't care. You don't care, and all you're focusing on is give me a drink. So you don't care about everything that happens in your workplace, in your family life, what goes on in this church, your personal problems. All you're thinking about is give me this. Give me this. Strong desire. All right. The third thing, this is obvious and very important, is to pray. Look at Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I believe in praying for this several times a day, several times a day, because it shows how frequently you want to be filled with the Spirit. You've got to beg the Lord quite often. You might say, really, I have to beg that hard? Well, yeah, because look at verses 5 through 9. It shows here about a story about this person who was persistent in waking up his neighbor and he said, I'm not going to go until you give me what I want, bread to eat. He kept uh, knocking and asking, knocking and asking. Yeah. Look at verse 5, and he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? Midnight, all right? I don't think anyone in this church would give me something if I start knocking on their door at midnight. They'll probably won't come back to church. And shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. Well, that's totally understandable. But look at verse 8. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, is Jesus your friend? Amen. Yeah, amen. Yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as what? Many? As he needeth. And then what did Jesus Christ say after that? Look at verse 13. He likens that then, if he then, this is one of my favorite verses that I would quote to the Lord before I requested. I would quote him, your word said, if he then being evil, know how to get good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father Give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. See, when you ask and ask, the Lord can give you more of His Holy Spirit. Amen. Now you might say, but I thought that when I get saved, I got the Holy Spirit in me. That's true. But this, this is not what we're talking about right here. Did it say the Holy Spirit or more? More. He shall, more of the Holy Spirit. See, it's one thing you have the Holy Spirit in you, but do you have more of Him? See, is He growing? Some of you have what? A baby Christian. Why? you got a baby spiritual growth. See, You want more of it. So it's very important to ask more. So in Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13, 
we see the importance of prayer. If you read these men, I mean, some of these people would not just, would not let God go. They would just wrestle like Jacob and then just pray all night and they would pray and pray and pray until the Lord gives them something. All right, the fourth one. Yield. Look at Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. You've got to yield to the Spirit. If you don't yield to the Spirit, but you yield to self what you want, then the Holy Spirit can't work in you. Okay, so you, you're saved. You want it that bad. And then you pray for it. Now what is God trying to do? Now he's trying to work in you, to fill with you, within you his Spirit. But when he tries to work within you, how can he do it when you keep resisting it and grieving it? He's not going to be a Calvinist where he forces it. You got to realize that uh, your flesh can resist his spirit. All right, you have free will involved right there. So you've got to make up your mind where your flesh is completely dead and the Holy Spirit can take full control and completely take over. If you want the Holy Spirit more, more of the spirit, fill me up, Lord then what you need to do is let him. You need to yield to him. Like a Galatians chapter 5. And then notice what the Bible says right here. Galatians 5. We will read Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. See that? And ye shall not fulfill what? The lust of the flesh. Oh, I got an addiction problem. I got a temptation problem. Right there. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Thought about that? Sometimes you, sometimes, if you have an addiction problem, can just simply ask you, uh, did you read, when's the last time you read your Bible? Yeah. When's the last time you prayed? Sure. Look at verse 25. Verse 25. Uh, the Bible says right here in verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us what? Also walk in the Spirit. Okay, you live in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you, but then uh, do you walk in it as well? So in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16, and then we see up to verse 25 right here. You have to yield. Now, how much power do you get out of that? When you get saved, and you thirst, and you pray, and you yield, how much power do you get? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I'll tell you one thing, I'm not a saint. I'm not the type of guy that I can boast that I'm like filled so much with the Spirit like, Char like Charles Finney and those people. But I promise you one thing, my life changed dramatically. And because I would just give in to this a little more, a little more, that's why you see miracles happening in this church and in your life. Amen. Sometimes uh, all of you who've been here for years, you notice that, right? You notice that, how God miraculously provided and intervened? Yes, sir. So you can't doubt God now. There is something to this. It changed my life, and you got to believe that this does something dramatic. Now go back to John 7. I hope your hand is still there at John 7. How much can the Holy Spirit power come out of your life? It is phenomenal. It is one of the greatest things ever. Look at John chapter 7. Look at verse 38. You can be so much filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the only picture you're going to see, okay? <laughs> you can be filled so much, so the Holy Spirit right now is inside you. And maybe he filled up so much within your life, so he fills up your mind now. Your mind belongs to him. Your hands completely yielded to him. Wherever you went, completely yielded to him. Your heart completely yielded to him. When he fills up so much within you, you know what he can also do? He can seep out of you. And it can seep so much out of you, what happens? It starts to affect so-and-so yeah. next to you. So-and-so over there. Amen. And then they're going to see something in you that you've got that they don't have. Because look at that verse. Look at John chapter 7. We read it. 37. He gets the Holy Spirit in him. But look at verse 38. Did it say in his belly or out of his belly? Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You fill so much with the Holy Spirit, it's going to burst out like rivers. And won't it be a blessing that San Francisco Bay Area and Silicon Valley get a taste of the Holy Spirit Amen. 
And they see little bits of that in street preaching. They see little bits of that with the tracks you leave behind after you eat at a restaurant. They see little bits of that when you knock on their door. They see little bits of that, and that's why they will cuss you out when you hand them a track with a smile. They see something that you, that you got that they don't have. Let's have them witness and see that before the rapture so that they will be without excuse once the Lord sounds his trumpet voice and we go home. Let them witness the power of the Holy Spirit. Let them see something here, shall we? Let's leave a mark over here.